nothing is as encouraging as a first crime that goes unpunished. You have no idea, my friend, of the effect of a young woman's tears on all these weak and timid souls. A man learns nothing when he talks, he learns by listening, which is why those who talk the most are, in the ordinary run of things, fools. I would, thank God, watch the universe perish without shedding a tear. Crime is to the passions what nervous fluid is to life. It sustains them. It supplies their strength. The greatest pleasures are born of conquered repugnancies. I suggest somewhere that anyone who wishes to write and has no aptitude for it would be better off making shoes for ladies and boots for men. There is no more lively sensation than that of pain. Its impressions are certain and dependable. They never deceive as may those of the pleasure women perpetually feign and almost never experience. Only two things are required to accredit an alleged miracle, a mountbank and a crowd of spineless lookers on. That men cannot do without the absurd idea of an afterlife is a peculiar mania of mankind. The primary and most beautiful of nature's qualities is motion. The lecher swears. The calm flows and supper sounds. To combine incest, adultery, sodomy and sacrilege, he buggers his married daughter with a host. Nothing that makes one hard is wicked, and the only crime in the world is to refuse oneself that pleasure. So long as the laws remain such as they are today, employ some discretion, loud opinion forces us to do so, but in privacy and silence, let us compensate ourselves for that cruel chastity we are obliged to display in public. I wish to stifle the unhappy passion which burned in my soul, but is love an illness to be cured? All I endeavored to oppose to it merely fanned its flames. Not my manner of thinking, but the manner of thinking of others has been the source of my unhappiness. Fear not lest precautions and protective contrivances diminish your pleasure. Mystery only adds thereto. To enlighten mankind and improve its morals is the only lesson which we offer in this story. In reading it, May the world discover how great is the peril which follows the footsteps of those who will stop at nothing to satisfy their desires. We owe more to habit than to nature, my friend. The latter creates us, the other shapes us. Who cares whose head be blasted when we must procure so-called evidence? A thousand victims to discover one who's guilty. That's the spirit of the law. It is very easy not to like what you do not know, but no one should be allowed not to want to know what is made to be liked very much indeed. For any citizen who does wrong you must have but one objective. If you wish to be fair, let his punishment be useful to him and others. Anything that deviates from that aim is infamy. Thus, the happiness the two sexes cannot find with the other they will find, one in blind obedience, the other in the most energetic expression of his domination. This monster was outfitted with faculties so gigantic that even the broadest thoroughfares would still have appeared too narrow for him.
The impossibility of outraging nature is the greatest anguish man can know. Women are not made for one single man. This for men at large nature created them. It has pleased nature so to make us that we attain happiness only by way of pain. This terrible truth shows us the awful necessity of evil in earth and demonstrates the lesser evils check greater ones. Much as bothersome insects lead a useful existence that keep us from being troubled by the more venomous. Fortunate moments of quiet happiness, where are they? Nowhere to be seen. Crime causes so much horror, even to criminals, that they would like, in order to escape from the necessity, they feel to be bad, to be believed and always to be depicted as virtuous. Self-interest lies beyond all those men do forming the important motive for all their actions, this rule has never deceived me. The law which attempts a man's life is impractical, unjust, and admissible. It has never repressed crime, for a second crime is every day committed at the foot of the scaffold. It is only by imitating the vices of others that I have earned my misfortunes. It has been estimated that more than 50 million individuals have lost their lives to wars and religious massacres. Is there even one among them worth the blood of a single bird? He who perpetrates an outrage may well be quick to forget what he has done, but they who have suffered at his hands are justified at least in remembering the wrongs he has done them. If really wise, a man should unquestionably prefer a libertine for a spouse than a woman who's only served modesty, and he should stop thinking that such modesty, treasured only by ugly women, is worth a wit to anybody else. If we punished only the crimes we would prove, we would not enjoy the pleasure of dragging our fellow human beings to the scaffold so much as four times a century and that is the only thing that makes us respected. A little less vice is virtuousness in a very vicious heart. Oh, my friend, never seek to corrupt the person whom you love. It can go further than you think. One would have to lose one's wits to believe in a god and to become a complete imbecile to adore him. Tormented virtue fidgets while vice takes its repose.